مسئله دکتر مصدق این بودش که به هدف سیاسی تو هم با هدف اقتصادی جلو بری و مهمترین اون این است که اقتصادمون رو طوری تنظیم بکنیم که اگه لازم شد بدون درآمد نفت بتوانیم سالها زندگی بکنیم تا به اون نتیجه نهایی که بخوایم برسیم The British repeatedly tried to undermine Mossadegh, painting him as a communist. But his popularity endured and he came out stronger than ever. The 16th Independent Parachute Brigade, alerted by the War Office, stands by for possible orders to proceed to a foreign destination. Britain came close to military intervention, but eventually opted for diplomatic pressure. سفارت انگلیس و مصدق در اکتبر 1952 بست به این عنوان که این سفارت مشغول بوده با, در در با دستیاری برادران رشیدیان سرلشکر زاهدی و سرلشکر حجازی که کودتا بکنه در مجلس 1952 was for America a year of decision A record 62 million, representing a cross-section of this broad land, streamed to the poles. Things were about to get rougher for Mossadegh. In America, a newly elected president took a hard line against the communist threat. The same month, British officials flew to Washington. We went there, really said to persuade the Americans at that stage that we weren't going to get anywhere with Mossadegh, and that his remaining in power was very dangerous to both our interests and also to tell them a little bit about the means we had at our disposal for changing the, changing the government. And we felt after we'd been talking for some time that they accepted that uh, Mossadegh remaining in power would eventually lead to a conflict. It was my feeling then, it remains my feeling, that the British understood the extent of, of paranoia in this country concerning uh, communism. This was the day of Joe McCarthy, and that the British consciously played on that fear in order to, to help persuade us to involve ourselves in the coup. The British plan was to get the Shah to sack Mossadegh and install a general, Fazlullah Zahedi, in his place. Despite Mossadegh's continuing popular support, the coup plotters managed to bring him down after a failed first attempt. I was the day of the coup in Tehran. I saw the community that came to me and the house of Dr. Mossadegh, my father, was a great man. من قارتگرا رو دیدم تو خیابون با اموالی رو که دزدیده بودن از اونجا فرار می‌کردن. That mob that came into North Tehran and was decisive in the overthrow was a mercenary mob. It had no ideology. And that mob was paid for by American dollars. And the amount of money that was used is it has to have been very large. اینها در جمعشون هزار نفر هم نمی‌شدن. در مقابل اون هزاران هزار نفری که در خانه های خودشون ملول بودن از اتفاقی افتاده بود و ارتباط نداشتن که چه باید بکنن از فرداش هم چنگال کودتا بسیار 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 قوی بود I'm on my way to meet another key witness to the overthrow of Prime Minister Mossadegh General Zahedi's son, himself a former Iranian foreign minister, now lives in Switzerland. مردم دنبال شخصیتی بودن اسمش فضل الله زاهدی بود بنابراین اگر یک شخصیتی نبود دولت خارجی هم مثل امریکا و انگلیس اون وقت دو موضوع براشون مهم بود یکی این که ایران کمونیست داشته دیگر این که نفت ایران داشته باشه این جرایانات ادهی زاهدی رو میخواستند که بیاد نخواست وزیر بشه فرض بکنیم که اون روز اینها کودتا کردند 
به قول شما من میگم راست این که مردم قیام کردن و دیگران دخالتی نداشتن خلاف واقع و چنان که من اشاره کردم ما الان گذشته از خاطرات معمولین CIA مثل روزویلت کیم روزویلت که داستان شهر داده توش تاریخچه داخلی خود CIA رو در باره چگونه یک کودت های بیشترشت مورداد از ابتدا تا انتها در دست داریم که در اینترنت هست و همه میتونن بهش دسترسی روش دازیم پس تمام این حرف های سی آیه یا دروغه؟ بعد از این چه؟ بسال همه دروغه چرا دروغه؟ برای این خاطر چطور خودش رو بعد مدارک بیرون نمیدن هر وقت خواهد کتاب ها آمده براجه کرد میگن ما اینا رو سوزوندیم در همه همین کتاب هایی که ولی تاریخ رسمی سی آیه آمد بیرون هیچ هم چیزی نیست یا شما نخودید یا من اشتباه هم... تاریخ رسمی سی آیه اینه نداره تاریخ, تاریخ رسمی کودتا بی سشت بی سشت مرداد اونی که نوشته شده دو نفرن یه انگلیسی نامیست بوتاس بوتاس یک دیگری هم هست بسم روزویلد با شرکت در این کودتا ببینید خارجی که در این ش... کودتا شرکت داره خیلی روک روک و راس و مشخص میگه ما در ایران کودتا کردیم کمان که میبینید که وزیر خارجه امریکا به یه صورت هم ازخایی کرد از ملت ایران 1953 was a turning point in British political influence over Iran. The coup left oil divided mainly between American and British companies, with a 50% share of the profits going to Iran. Mohammad Reza Shah gradually took power solely for himself. You see many famous people waiting here, of course. You recognize at once the Prime Minister, Mr. Butler, S.I. hanging on the curtains for Shah and Shah of Iran. In May 1959, his visit was treated as a state occasion and broadcast live on the BBC. Queen, royal family, walk forward to greet the Shah, who leaves the train wearing a splendid uniform encrusted with gold. The Queen presents her dignitaries. The Jordanian pipe band, lent by King Hussein, rendered cock of the north at Gulistan Palace on the morning of the Shah's 42nd birthday. Oil revenues had resulted in a dramatic expansion of Iran's economy. And in 1973, the Shah, as the head of the oil-producing nations, doubled the world price of oil. For Britain, it was a problem and an opportunity. It was important to us because the oil price rise had taken place in 73 in order to offset the revenues that we were going to put out in order to purchase oil and a lot of it Iranian oil. Um, we needed offset arrangements and he was ready and wanted to buy British military equipment in particular but actually other things. So we were in the market for trying to sell the maximum amount that we could to him and we particularly important to sell him tanks. Trade took over from politics as the Shah used his oil revenues to buy British technology. The expectations of Iranians were increasing as the country modernized, and the gap between rich and poor was growing. Iran's religious traditions were being ignored. The Shah couldn't tolerate opposition of any kind, and his only answer was repression. The West became nervous about their rich friend. The Shah by then was pretty autocratic. Uh, he had had his way substantially since the oil price rise in 1973. I became foreign secretary in 77 and saw him that year in Tehran. And I had a good dialogue with him and was even able to raise the treatment of prisoners and uh, the need to have independent inspection from the Red Cross or amnesty and didn't provoke an outcry from him. But nevertheless, he was hypersensitive of any criticism and he was reluctant to take advice, and you knew that. So you had to handle him within those constraints. 